<laughs> Multi platinum recording artist JP One. <laughs> I wish <laughs> we working on it. <laughs> All right, man. Um, the streets have been talking, man. Are you the same guy that posts all them statuses? And that question is a two part question. Are you the same guy? And if you are, actually, it's a one part question. Are you the same guy posting all the statuses or what? <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, obviously, I'm the one posting the statuses, but um, it's like Facebook will only give you a, a piece of somebody, any social media, like pictures. I'm pretty sure like the female's not waking up in the morning saying, hey, this is me, no filter. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So a lot of people get into the, like, they they starting to believe everything people doing on social media. And I don't feel like that's a, you know, that's an accurate account of anybody. Because a picture here and there is never going to be what somebody going through. You got people that's homeless and posting pictures of mansions. You got people that don't have a car standing next to cars taking pictures. You think they own the auto show. So I feel like a lot of people are taking the social media a little too literal. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? It's me. Taking then, it too serious. Yeah, it's too much. And, and, and not just the social media part. Like I say, I, <laughs> I take full responsibility. I don't take stats down or none of that. So... People, I think a lot of people misreading the stats. Like, they're not understanding. Like, I'm not mad at nobody. I haven't went off on nobody. Like, I say something, it's like, I just made a point. But it seemed like every time somebody, like, every I'm going out and I'm meeting people and they like, oh, you nice or you cool or... It's like, they thinking, like, they was expecting a monster or something. Like, dude, I'm cool. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you can, you know, you can come up to me and pro I'm real approachable. Like, you can come out to me, how you doing? You don't have to approach me, oh, man, I love your music. You can hate my music and just speak to me. And that's what I feel like. I, 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 I'm I, leading people to believe, like, I'm just some asshole. Like, no, I'm not that, man. I'm real cool. Everybody who meet me know, like, hey, dude, cool. Like, I'm the only person out here that you can probably, that's, that's making moves like I'm making moves. You can still approach me with a CD, and I'm going to buy your CD. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't have to come give me a CD. I'm going to buy your CD and listen to it and give you a shot. If it's garbage, I'm throwing it out the window. <laughs> but at least I gave you a shot. It's a lot of people who I've sold CDs to or gave and give CDs to. And, and I bump into them a year later. They haven't listened to the first CD I gave them. And they're like, man, right. you know, dang, I listened to this CD, man. I'm going to go back to listen to the first one you gave me. So, you know, I feel like, you know, you got to get to know a person. And you can't get to know a person just from Facebook. You right. can even listen to my music and get to know me better than a Facebook stat. Right. You know I mean? So, so you've been you've been out, you've been out of the slammer for <laughs> for uh, how long? It's been about a, a little about close to two and a half years now. So when you came out, how how are you different now as as far as music? Would you would you take anything back? Would you change anything? You probably came out with a certain mindset yeah. when you got out, as opposed to now. Is there any difference? Yeah. Um, when I came home, I was like, um, I was probably impatient. Mm -hmm. So I, I hadn't put out music, so I rushed the CD out in like four weeks. And I recorded half of it with Rizzo, so the, that half of the CD sound good. But the first half of the CD was like, uh, and, um, but I wanted something out. I mean, everything happened for a reason, so I needed a product. Like, I was going out and going to these open mics and everything. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I probably could have just took my time. I could have took an extra week or two and got it all the way together. Right. So that and then I'm understanding quality over quantity now. So I'm learning like the quality mm -hmm. of videos need to be good, how to have a concept with the videos. I'm learning how to make sure the, the CD is mixed and mastered properly. And that's the reason I re-released Gifted and Talented. I, I made it a bonus CD and put two extra songs on there just because I knew the common man wouldn't understand mixing and mastering because I just learned about mixing and mastering. Right. So I went in and got the CD remixed and remastered because it wasn't up to par, like certain songs was low. Some I didn't understand mixing and mastering. So when I, I'm thinking, okay, while he mixing the songs, they being mastered, I didn't understand it. So, right. you know, that's the biggest thing now, man. I'm going for, you know, quality over quantity. And I got rid of a lot of loose ends. Like like when I came home, I was expecting a certain type of support here, a certain type mm -hmm. of support there. I had a partner. Then I had a second partner in a whole new label situation. And now it's all me. So I run gifted and talented. So that's the big thing. Now I'm making all the decisions. So there's nobody to point a finger at. Whether it, it, it work or it don't work, it's back on me. 
And with that, it's like, you know, strap them on. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I'm looking for, you know, people to to bring on and, and help me do, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff and help me with the business while I make this music. But right now I got to do everything so I don't have a problem with it. I know what I got on my shoulders, so I handle it. So the biggest thing from being in now is actually a better understanding. When I left prison, I had the, the mindset of, I'm going to come out here and drop dope music and they're going to fuck with me. When I came out here and I did dope music, and it was like, real quick. who the fuck is you? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. 10,000 other people rapping. Right. So it, it doesn't matter how good you are because nobody gives you the chance. It's like 10,000 other people just try to say, hey, listen to my music. So now it's like, I understand that. So I take more promotion, marketing, and all of that type of stuff. I take it more seriously now. And I understand you can't just put out a dope product and say, huh, listen to it. Right. It's here now. It ain't so going to work. It's, it won't work like that. So... It's, um, you know, like I say, the videos got better. Everything, the quality of everything's gotten better. And now I'm not rapping over a bunch of industry beats and calling it a mixtape. Like, Give right. Times is pretty much like an album. Now you're working with some of the hottest producers, like yeah. Pigpen. Like Pigpen. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, 2014, yeah. we're about one month into it. What are your uh, goals? This time, 2015, where, oh. you, where do you see yourself? Where would, you, where would you like to see yourself? Right Paul now, goes to corner plan. Yeah, right now we we um I'm pushing the gift and the talented. Like I said, I, I've never took a a full stance on a project. Like I'm going at this one. So like this uh, the third video, well the fourth video we shot for it. The um the the whole you know I did Vlad, World Star, Don Diva. Um, all the local music channels here, you know what I'm saying, the radio. So it's a whole different situation. I have a pretty solid fan base now, and I'm just trying to build on the fan base. So uh, we know that you're, you're uh, for lack of a better word, sick and tired of uh, uh, performing live around here, you know, yeah. dealing with all the BS. So uh, would you uh, or have you pursued opportunities um, out of state. Basically, uh, you ever thought about getting the fuck out of here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I can't even lie. I'm think. Um, I'm actually planning to move. Um, probably uh, somewhere south. It's either gonna be south or west. So I'm looking Atlanta, Dallas, and I have family in uh, California. So I'm looking, you know, those three places really. Um, I can't necessarily say I want to move. But all the advice that's been given to me from music people outside of Detroit has been to get the fuck out of Detroit. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, how many times you need to hear that to be like, okay, let me get out right. of here. And I've spent these two years, like, basically beating down, beating down, beating down, beating down the wall. Like, man, you know, y'all doing this wrong. Or y'all doing it this way. Or y'all doing this. And right now, they've made it seem like I'm against all local artists or all local this or all local that. It's not that. I feel like the, the media platforms here, the, the media outlets here, they um only, you know, promote one type of sound here. So and that's not my sound. So maybe I need to be somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So that's yes. pretty much what it is. I agree. So is there anything you like to say? Um, to no, wrap this up. Yeah, basically, you know, go check me out. Check out my website, um, www.jp1life.com. Download Gifted and Talented for free. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chosen One Jackpot, and follow me on all of the social media. At Chosen One Jackpot, C H O S E N, the number one jackpot, J A C K P O T. You do miss a lot of folks in here who are you with? Are you single? Are they stupid? Are they Benny Ballers and you Ruth Chris? That's the type of shit that I do get and I do got what you need. I'm sorry, baby, but those looks alone don't impress a nigga like me. Obviously, you interest me, I wouldn't dare.